Hi Alex, um, so I'm doing my presentation on John Calvin. So John Calvin was a theologian, writer of apologetics, polemic literature, theological treaties, and com confessional documents. He was also a pastor. Calvin was born on the 10th of July, 1509, and he died aged 55 on the 27th of May, 1564. Calvin broke from the Roman Catholic Church in 1533. In 1534, Calvin f had to flee to Switzerland after a violent uprising against the uh, Protestant Church in France. This was caused by the affair of the placards, where supporters of the, Rome, of the Reformation placed anti-Catholic placards across France containing the Catholic Church so-called travesties. The affair caused the Catholic Church to respond, resulting in the violence. Calvin played a major role in promoting the Catholic Reformation through France and Switzerland. Jo John Calvin described himself as a pretty stubborn in as pretty stubborn in his faith in Catholicism, and proclaims that it is a miracle that God brought him out of that. Calvin is, is also at pains to point out that his conversion to Protestantism was not at all easy, but involved a lot of anguish and obedience. Calvin believed in that he had a prophetic calling to, on his life to lead the church into a reform. His first significant work in 1536 was the Institutes of the Christian Religion, in which he sets out a defense of his faith and doctoral position for the benefit of other reformers. This book was the first of several editions by the same title, outlining Calvin's theology. Calvin wrote the second edition in 1539 after enlarging the scope of the doctrine to make it more appealing to new Christians. Calvin was very interested in the organization and governance of the church, in, in particular its patterns in liturgy. He wrote on the subjects on subjects like the Lord's Supper, confessions of, of faith, the edification of the church, and corporate worship. He also made an enormous effort to summarize the roles of people within the church according to the Bible. This includes pastors, elders, and deacons. Throughout his life, deacon, um, throughout his life, Calvin attended many councils and meetings to discuss the legitimacy and procedure of church doctrine. This shows, shows his in authority and influence in the acceptance of theology right around the world, of which we still see the roots of today. 50, 1553 was an important year in Calvin's ministry. At this time, Calvin became acquainted with Michael Servetus, a lay person who would debate Calvin on debate Calvin on the basis of theology. Servetus was a critic of the Trinity and infant baptism. Calvin condemned these views, excommunicating him from the church, which ultimately led to his arrest and execution. Calvin was ha hailed a hero by the was. Calvin was hailed as a hero of the faith for the way he dealt with Cervantes and as such he secured the trust of the church worldwide. To, it seems to me that Calvin, although fighting for the Protestants, still had a healthy sense of authority of the church in states of the mat of the ch of in matters of the in matters of the state. This was exemplified by Calvin's continued discourse with the consistory and desire to be consulted on issues of discipline. Calvin was also very was course, Calvin was also very strict on people that did not behave in the manner he described and believed in the full force or the full consequence of the law. I think this is understandable if you look at the context Calvin grew up in. A context where the church and the state were intertwined. I don't think it was Calvin's wish 
I don't think Calvin's wish was to untangle the church's influences in matter of the state, but his argument was against the piety and complacency that had overrun the church due to its high place in society. Okay, let's have a look at theology. There are eight, there are eight things within this in within uh, Calvin's theology that I would like to uh, highlight. So let's have a let's go. Calvin's theology is revealed throughout his writing, but but especially in his extensive work on the institutes of the Christian religion which, as I said, was revised several times throughout his life. Calvin also expanded on his theology throughout his numerous biblical commentaries. However, the content, however, the content contained in the revisions show that Calvin's theology did not fundamentally change throughout his life. So let's have a look at Scripture. Calvin writes, For anyone to arrive as, at God as creator, he needs script, scripture as his guide and teacher. I think this quote encapsulates Calvin's theology on scripture. Calvin argued that knowledge of God was not inherent of humanity and could not be experienced through the world. According to Calvin, the only way knowledge of God could be obtained is through the study of the scriptures. Although Calvin believed in general revelation, he did not think sense, of, sense could be made out of it without scripture. Calvin explains that scripture is like, is like glasses, which allow the reader to see the world around them clearly and make sense of it. Interestingly, Calvin, despite his interest in apologetics, did not spend much time defending the authenticity of the scriptures, instead believing it was self-evident to the believer. I think this is very much tied in with his views on predestination. You see, if the believer is predestined to, to be in glory, then there is no need to uh, defend the authenticity of scriptures to them. So let's have a look at providence. To Calvin, providence referred to the way God intervenes and protects, and protects the world and the actions he performs within it. To Calvin, if God is entirely sovereign, then there is no action on earth he can, that can be done without him predestining it. Calvin writes, Nothing happens but what God has knowingly and willingly decreed. Calvin also believed that humans are unable to fully comprehend or relate to God due to their total depravity and therefore are in need of God's intervening power in order to be in relationship with him. Thus, circum th thus this circumstance is free will in salvation. Calvin writes, By his power, God cherishes and guards the world which he has made and by his providence rules its in, in individual parts. Alrighty, the next part is sin. Calvin's theology of sin was heavily influenced by Augustine. Throughout his life, on countless occasions, Calvin referred back to Augustine on this matter. Calvin believed that due to Adam's sin, humans are inherent of the state of sin from the moment of conception. This notion is based on the doctrine of total depravity. According to Calvin, due to Adam's federal headship over humanity, all humanity is subject to the consequences of sin without fail and thus require the salvation offered by Jesus Christ. Federal headship simply means that Adam was the representative of all humanity when he made the decision to eat of the fruit. Whatever choices made relating to sin, the consequences were all for all humanity. Therefore, it is like we are all eating of the fruit at the same time. Okay, the third one we're going to, sorry, the fourth one we're going to talk about is, aton is atonement. 
for Calvin, the cult, the cross was the essential doctrine of salvation, which all doctrine hinged upon. Calvin recognized that Jesus' entire life on earth was to fulfill the mission of redeeming humankind, humankind and atoning for the sins of the world. According to Calvin, to fully understand the necessity of atonement, one must first understand the ideas of God's divine wrath and human depravity. That sin entered the world and deprived humanity, which provoked the wrath of a holy creator. Calvin's understanding of God's wrath saw that there be a need for punishment and the judgment for humanity's sinfulness. Calvin is quick to point out that although God does not judge sins individually, it does not mean that he will forget about them. Calvin exhorts his readers to under, undeservedly acknowledge that, there, that every sin is deadly and deserved of punishment. Fifthly, we're going to look at uh, union in Christ. For Calvin, union in Christ was something that was attained by faith and faith alone. He described faith as the firm and certain knowledge of God in Christ. The outworking of faith in the believer, in the believer is the repentance of sin followed by spiritual regeneration. Calvin is quick to point out that this regeneration of sin does not mean that the believer can attain to be without sin but will continue to struggle with it. Justification also plays an important role in the believer's union with Christ, as it is the role that, of Christ who makes the believer justified. Calvin defines just, justify, justification as the access, acceptance by which God regards us as righteous, whom he has received by grace. I find this quote fascinating because, again, it points to the Calvin's belief that God is sovereign in the work of salvation. That is, that God, it is God that initiates and carries through the action, and people play no part in it. Second to last is predestination. That God is sovereign through, through the work of salvation is, is a repeated theme throughout cult, Calvin's whole theology as we have discovered. This culminates in, the theology, in his theology on predestination. Calvin's tradition of predestination includes theologians such as Augustine, Thomas Aquinas, and Martin Luther. Scholars agree that, Mar that Calvin went much further in his explanation of predestination than any of his predecessors. This further add-on they talk about is often referred to as double predestination. On predestination, Calvin writes this, All are not created on equal terms. Some are preordained to eternal, eternal life, while others to eternal damnation. Calvin called those that are saved the elect, saying that the elect could never lose their salvation. Rather, those that appear to be saved, but eventually fall away, were not saved in the first place. Okay, so the last one, which is uh, church and church traditions. The church, according to Calvin, was the body of believers who placed Christ as its head. As such, Calvin used this as his main rationale for his own breakaway from the Catholic Church, as he believed the Catholic Church was not placing God at its head. Calvin based a lot of his theology surrounding the church on Ephesians 4.11, where it says, Christ appointed apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to equip his people. Calvin regarded the first three as temporary roles. That is, uh, that is apostles, prophets, evangelists. In other words, Roles, these roles were used in the New Testament times, but are not roles in present, used in the present day. However, Calvin appointed pro 
pastors and teachers at all the churches he was in charge at. Calvin respected the work of the church council to, to a certain degree, but thought it should be limited somewhat from the power of the state through separation. So that's the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening. Um, I'll put my notes and my bibliography up on Moodle. Hope you have a good day, uh, Alex.